The Code of Best Practice is a document that's been put together by all the shooting organisations and relevant bodies. That is something that all shooters, gamekeepers, shoot managers, picker-uppers and beaters should read, know about and adhere to. Within the code, there are two definitions of must and should. If it says we must do something, we must do it. It means we're sticking to best practice and adhering to the principles the industry have set down to keep us within what the sector deems as the best way to proceed. Where the code says we should do something, it means precisely that. These are things we should be doing, and if we deviate away from them, a good reason must be defined for that deviation. There are five golden rules to the code of shooting practice. The safe conduct of shooting must meet the standards described of in this code. One, you must show respect for the countryside, due regard for health and safety, and consideration for others. Two, shoot managers must endeavour to enhance wildlife, conservation and the countryside. Three, respect for quarry is paramount. It is fundamental to mark and retrieve all shot game. Game is food and it should be treated accordingly. Four, if birds are released, shoots must take steps to comply with the relevant sections of this code. Five, birds must never be released to replenish or replace any birds that have been released or shot during that current season. All those involved in shooting should act as good ambassadors for the sport. You can help protect the future of shooting by complying with this code and encouraging others who shoot to do the same. As a shooter, this code requires you to think about the following things at all times. Safety, observance of the law and good manners, respect for quarry, habitat and the wider countryside, and seeking to help and support the organisations that represent and promote our sport. According to the code, all shooters have a list of responsibilities. Guns should take account for the size of bags and the frequency of their shooting. Guns should aim to take shooting that matches their skills and capabilities. Guns must be competent at estimating range and ensure that they have the capabilities and equipment to ensure clean and consistent kills. Shooters must ensure that they know and can identify the quarry species they are after. It is also your responsibility to comply with all lead shot regulations. Inexperienced guns should improve their shooting skills on clay targets and must be accompanied and supervised by a suitably experienced person. Guns should avoid depositing lead shot into wetlands that are important for feeding wildfowl. Game husbandry must be conducted with all due consideration for the health and the welfare of the birds. The aim of game rearing is to provide fit and healthy birds, well adapted for release into the wild. Game rearing is covered by statutory codes of practice for the welfare of game birds reared for sporting purposes. These are issued by the government. Shoot managers to check for the providence of the birds, including health and welfare of the birds prior to delivery. Shoot managers should support UK game producers as a preferred source of stock for release. Under normal circumstances, all birds should be released a minimum of one month before the shooting season and should be released at such a time to make them old enough and fit enough and strong enough to be shot on your first day. Shoots should only release game birds that are not going to cause environmental damage and can refer to the Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust releasing guidelines which is available on their website. One of the main goals of shooting estates is to have a net biodiversity game. It's something we're good at but can always improve. Shooters will always want to leave the environment and countryside in a better condition than when we found it. 
Pheasant release pens should not take up more than one third of the woodland area of the shoot. Where shoots might exceed the recommended densities, they should be able to demonstrate that there is no adverse effect to flora or fauna in the area. Partridge pens should be sited on game cover crops, arable land, grassland, rather than semi-improved or unimproved habitats. Duck must always be released into suitable wetland habitat and in numbers that are appropriate to the natural carrying capacity. Wetland areas are particularly sensitive and releasing reared birds should not be allowed to be detrimental to any wild birds or habitat. All released birds should be encouraged to become wild and no shooting should be undertaken until such a time as those birds are wilded. For shoots that are releasing on triple SIs, certain other guidelines and legal requirements need to be followed. You must refer to your organisations for advice on this or your local Natural England representative. Shooting should not be conducted where it is not possible to retrieve the shot game. It is the duty of shoot managers to ensure adequate provision is made to retrieve all shot game. And dogs are an essential part of this process. On driven days, any wounded games should be retrieved mid-drive or as soon as is safe and practical to do so. Guns must mark the fall and assist in the retrieval of their own game. Guns and pickers up should ensure that they dispatch all wounded game in a swift and humane manner. A day's game shooting should finish early enough for the pickers up to finish their duties before birds start to go to roost. Shooting should be cancelled or stopped if adverse weather conditions mean that the game can no longer be shot safely or in a sporting manner. At release time, most poults are still growing rapidly and wheat is not a sufficient diet. Compound game rations specifically designed for those birds should be fed in pens until the birds are sufficiently grown. The feeding of game birds after the shooting season must continue. This is vital to ensure that they are healthy going into the spring. Not only will this benefit game birds, but also all other small birds that live on the estate and on the land. The period from February to May is often referred to as the hungry gap, and as shoot managers, we can help to fill that gap. The use of medicated feed and grit must comply with all label instructions and all veterinary advice. Shooting must not take place until any stated withdrawal period is passed. Those involved in pest and predator control should do so in a lawful manner. They should take into consideration local residents and other countryside users. Traps and snares are widely used in pest and predator control and all legal provisions on inspection and their use must be observed. Snares should be set in accordance with their relevant codes of practice for their use. Trapped animals must be removed on inspection, dispatched of humanely and disposed of lawfully. Carcasses should not be displayed. It serves no useful purpose and may upset other countryside users. Approved chemicals should only be used for their intended legal purpose. They must be stored in accordance with COSH regulations and only used by people permitted to do so. Accurate records of all pest and predator control legally carried out must be kept. When shooting pest and predators, suitable rifles, shotguns and ammunition should be used to ensure a rapid dispatch. It is the shoot manager's legal responsibility to ensure that all shoot employees adhere to the law. Guns must also comply to the law. A list of these laws can be found on the Shooting Code of Good Practice online. Over the years, the Code of Good Shooting Practice has proved successful in raising standards and promoting best practice. Please play your part in ensuring that all shoots come up to the mark 
For more details and information, please visit www.codeofgoodshootingpractice.co.uk.